My name is Dakota Brazer and I'm Minister McLeod Senior Communications Advisor and Press Secretary. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Following the announcement, the Minister will be taking questions from the media. If you have a question, we ask that you put your name and outlet in the chat bar on the side and I will unmute you to ask your questions. Just a reminder, it will be one question, one follow-up. I'll now turn it over to Minister McLeod. Thank you very much, Dakota, and thank you all for joining us here today. I'm pleased to be here with, uh, with my friend, my colleague, my boss, uh, the Honourable Premier Doug Ford, uh, who will be joining us to say a few words, uh, as well as His Eminence Archbishop Soterios and MPPs Christina Midas, F.E. Tria Fantopoulos, and Eris Babiakian, uh, making an, a very important announcement for our Greek Heritage Month and our Greek diaspora here in the province of Ontario. As you all know, the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries has overseen a suite of sectors that have been hit first, hardest, and will take the longest to recover in the, uh, in the pandemic. Uh, we have been uh, hit the hardest, uh, harder than uh, SARS, the global economic recession, as well as 9-11 uh, as well as all put together. Uh, we have experienced a triple threat. threat. First, uh, we have experienced a healthcare crisis, an economic crisis, and a social crisis. But I've seen time and time again over the past year, the resilience and creativity uh, of the sectors that I represent. And today is, uh, is, I think, going to be an historic day for the Greek community as we once again show that creativity and, uh, and, and that the resilience. Uh, yesterday, we had significant investments into heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. And we're looking forward to uh, talking more about some of those more detailed um, proposals and programs that will be in place um, throughout the next couple of weeks and months. Um, but today is celebrating 200 years of, of Greek independence and the Greek Heritage Month as a private member's bill from my colleague Effie. Um, today is about aiding the social and economic recovery of our sectors and showing hope is on its way. And so today we will be announcing a significant planning project to benefit our large Greek diaspora across the province of Ontario, in particular the 270,000 Greek Canadians that live in the city of Toronto. I've often said that Ontario is the world in one province, and I think our diversity, particularly in Toronto and Ottawa, are very important uh, for us to accentuate, both as uh, we celebrate our culture, but also as we recover with tourism. So the world in one province, and I'm sitting here today at Pearson International Airport, will soon be ready when we get enough vaccines in people's arms to welcome the world back to, uh, to our province. But until then, uh, we're gonna continue to support these important sectors particularly in our heritage and culture industries. And that's why we're here today. Uh, Premier Four, would you like to uh, say a few words? Because this is a project that you and I have been working on for over a year now. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Minister. And, and uh, I want to thank everyone for having me on. I want to begin by wishing everybody a very happy Greek Independence Day. And what, what a perfect day to be making this announcement with my incredible colleagues, uh, Minister uh, McLeod, as you just heard from and MPPs, Christina Midas and Effie Triantafilopoulos, Eris Babikian and Rod Phillips. And I wanna give a shout out to Rod. Uh, your, your eminence, as you know, uh, Rod helped out uh, in, in kicking this off along with it, all our, uh, our team, but uh, Rod did an incredible job. So, uh, and again, I, I also wanna thank your eminence. Thank, thank you for being here today. And we just had a conversation earlier on. I can't wait to come and pay you a visit again. And the president of the Greek community, Endonis uh, Artemakis, sorry for that. Uh, and the history of the, the Greek uh, dates going back thousands of years. And the Greek people have given the world so many gifts. We're so fortunate to have a strong Greek community in Ontario. Uh, Minister, you said 270,000. I'm gonna stick with the 270 because I have a little different figure. So let's say the 270,000 uh, people from the Greek community uh, growing uh, every single day, and thank God for that. The strength of this province is our diversity and our cult cultural heritage. That's why it was so important for our government to pass the bill in 2019 to commemorate each March as Hellenic Heritage Month, the first province to do so in the entire country. This is a time for everyone to celebrate the many contributions people of Greek heritage have made to enrich our communities. That's why during this Hellenic Heritage Month, it is so fitting to announce our province is going to invest $325,000 to 
to support the creation of the Greek Canadian Heritage Museum right here in Toronto. So that's, that's great news. This is a much needed project at a time of great difficulty. Ontario's cultural and heritage sectors have been among the first and hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic and will take the longest to recover. Once built, this museum will provide a special place for the community to gather and celebrate Greek culture and heritage. We're also so grateful to the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Canada and the many community leaders who contributed to the development of this community-centered project. They recognize the importance of bringing together art, culture, and history to tell the Greek Canadian story and preserve the wonderful legacy. And before I end off, I, I just want to thank the, the Greek community and your eminence, I've, as we discussed earlier, uh, just massive supporters of my brother Rob and myself. We, we go down to the, the parade and we've had so many great uh, times within the Greek community. And I just want to say thank you. I'm so, so grateful uh, for that. And again, I want to wish everyone a very happy Greek Independence Day and God bless. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Premier Ford, and thank you, Minister McLeod. This is a wonderful news. I am elated. I had this dream for the Greek Museum in Canada, and with this, with your help, it's going to be a reality. And I thank you so very, very much. The Honorable Premier, you know very much how I respect and I love you and I admire you. Not only you, but your colleagues and the government. Because I believe that you are people of principles and you try your best for <coughs> in Ontario. Thank you so very much. When we had a meeting with the leaders, or the faith leaders, you proved that you love the churches and the religions and you are working for them and we had as a result that our churches are open with 15 percent of people and we are grateful to you for that of course we're always asking for more and more and you know that we wait to see that the government is going to be more about this yesterday i heard in the news that you are giving 50 million dollars for the different faiths and the projects that they have. And I would like to thank you for that as well. As I said before, your family is inspiring me and your government is inspiring me because you are people of principles. I thank you and especially today that we celebrate the 200 years of the independence of Greece. If you allow me to say one more word, it would be this. For 400 years, Greeks were under Turkish occupation and it was so very difficult. And they revolted because they, they had faith in God. And not only that, the allies helped them as well. And we are people that we must live as one family across the world. We should respect one another we, we should respect human rights and we should continue on. I have no words to thank you on behalf of all the Greek Orthodox people and the Greeks in Canada. And of course, our Archdiocese encompasses everyone from coast to coast to coast. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Your Eminence, uh, beautiful words. And I do, uh, thanks for acknowledging the $50 million uh, in my ministry that will be dedicated to the religious and cultural communities across Ontario. And I look forward to working with you on that. And uh, now for a uh, quick uh, one minute remarks, my colleagues that uh, will be joining us. Uh, I'll first point to my friend, oh, uh, my dear friend, Christina Midas, uh, if uh, she would say a few words. Yeah, could I, uh, Minister, I apologize. Oh, Your Eminence and everyone, I, I, I wanted to make sure I hopped on here. They, they have me booked. They, they ha keep me going, Your Eminence, every every few seconds there. And I, I'm going to have to run to a, another meeting. But again, uh, what a great announcement. 
And uh, ministry, you're doing a great job. All my MPPs are doing a great job. And God bless each and every one of you. Again, your eminence, I can't wait to come by and pay you a visit when we, we get through this a, a little bit. Mm-hmm. So again, and, and you have my phone number. You call me anytime. Mm-hmm. So thank, thank you, everyone. I do apologize. They, they have me really running today. Well, thanks, but, Premier. Uh, okay, th- thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. God bless. Thank you. Okay, Christina, over to you. All right, thank you, Minister. And uh, I, I know that the Premier was very excited about this announcement today as well. He even called me earlier to, to make sure that he had everybody's names and he was so excited to join. So I, I as well am so happy to see this come to fruition, Your Eminence. And I, I know that um, my colleague Effie and I came to visit you together when we were elected and you you told us about the idea of the museum. And so for us, we're, we're very happy to see it come to life and to see that you know our government is supporting the Greek community and our culture, our religion, and that we're going to be able to preserve our history for future generations like my little ones. So I won't say much. I'm just so happy, especially as you said, your eminence, that it's, uh, you know, uh, happening on, on the day of the bicentennial celebration. I think that it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I look forward to asking for more, as you say, more capacity and more funds to help support our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. I'll now uh, pass it over to Effie Tree and Philopolis, I hope I got that right, Effie, uh, who is the sponsor of Greek Heritage Month and who uh, was very excited and actually gave me this lovely pin today, so. Uh, th- uh, thank you, Minister, and, uh, and, and your eminence. Thank you for joining us today, along with my colleagues, Christina Midas and Aris Babikian. Uh, you're quite right, today marks an incredible anniversary for, for our community because it's the 200th anniversary of Greek independence. And so you'll see throughout the country and our province, there are monuments that are being lit up in the colors of the Greek flag, blue and white, in order to be able to recognize this wonderful anniversary for ours. I'd like to personally thank our Premier and Minister McLeod for recognizing the valuable contribution of our Hellenic Canadian community to the province of Ontario. Um, As you know, two years ago, the the provincial government, through the help of uh, our colleague Rod Phillips, helped pass the Hellenic Heritage Month. And that means that every day, every every year going forward for the month of March, we'll be able to celebrate Hellenic heritage. Today, in particular, I'd like to thank the Premier and and Minister McLeod for supporting this idea that His Eminence had about being able to preserve our culture and our heritage through the Greek Heritage Museum. And I'd like to add just um, just a note that Greeks um, came to Canada shortly after Confederation. The census of 1871 counted 39 Greeks living in Canada, and we've blossomed as a community uh, ever since then. So thank you so much for this wonderful um, event today, Minister McLeod. Well, a, a well done, Effie. Uh, a lot of credit goes to you. Uh, I just have to find the money to, to help you out with it, but uh, good work. Uh, Eris, I'll provide uh, the last word to you before we go to questions from the media. So uh, a quick one or two minutes uh, worth of remarks. Sure, thank you, Minister, uh, for the opportunity and inviting me to be part of this great announcement, historic announcement, your eminence, colleagues. It is my honor and privilege to be here today to participate in this important announcement not because I am a friend of the uh, Greek community, but also because one uh, part of my family comes from Greece, from the old Greece, from the Ottoman Empire times. So it it means so much to me to participate in this uh, meeting. And what a fitting tribute to the Greek community in Ontario, in in Canada, to to have a museum to commemorate, uh, to remember, and to pass the torch for the future generation of Hellens in Ontario, to be proud of their community, to be, uh, to be proud of their roots and carry over their contribution to our society. Uh, the Greek community in Ontario is in uh, instrumental part, integral part of our society, and they are w- one of the other many communities that made Canada what it is, the best country in the world. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank you to the Premier for taking part in this announcement and working hard. Also, I would like to thank uh, MPP Rod Phillips also for his contribution. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Eris, and I'm glad each one of you uh, recognized. I don't, I didn't see him here, and I don't think he is. Uh, Rod Phillips, uh, who did a, a tremendous job, um, and obviously not only a big contributor to this, but when I look at the last budget, uh, so many things that he did for heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. Dakota, I'll now turn it over to you. Apologies, thank you, Minister. So we'll now go to questions from the media. Uh, we do only have time for a couple questions. We do have a tight schedule as well today. Minister, your first question comes from Justin at CHCH. Justin, you should be able to unmute on your end. Yeah, I think I'm good. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Thank you, Minister. I actually just wanted to sort of shift the focus to CFL and wondered if there's- <laughs> I knew any... it was that's what you were gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> I figured after last week. OHL or CFL me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you being open to it. I just wondered if you can foresee the CFL playing in 2021. The president of the Red Blacks and Thai Cats have made statements that they feel like it's going to happen. Do you feel that? Yeah, look, I, spark, I spoke earlier today with uh, Mark Gowdy uh, over at the Ottawa Sports Entertainment Group, obviously, that uh, owns the Red Blacks. Um, you know, they have proposals in, I believe, at the health table right now. Uh, we have made provisions for professional sports uh, in the past, so I, I, I can see that if we get to a stage uh, where they can re safely return to play, that, that, uh, that I could be optimistic there. Um, you know, I've had uh, an opportunity just to reach out to Scott over at the Ticats and um, earlier on, uh, a couple of months ago, to, you know, just to reiterate my uh, support uh, if we were to do some type of uh, Grey Cup. Um, obviously, I'm very partial to the Grey Cup. I think it, it exemplifies what this ministry is. It's heritage, sport, tourism, and culture. Um, and so, you know, that's something that we're looking at. And, you know, we continue to have open dialogue with all of our professional um, sports organizations uh, because we recognize um, it's not only about a return to play for them, it's also it's a, it's also part of our economy. Is there a timeline for making a, a decision on that with regards to the season? That kickoff scheduled for June 10th in terms of the regular season. And did the NHL sort of set the precedent in terms of what the CFL needs to do to make it safe? Yeah, so the NHL has definitely set the threshold. Um, they had a 600 page document that detailed everything from testing to high level sanitation um, in order to uh, make sure people were protected, what type of vehicles they would be in, when people would be permitted inside the facility, um, all of those details. And so we, can, we continue to encourage people to look at that uh, as the threshold. And the NBA was actually the one who set the stage at the very early on phase of the pandemic with the Raptors um, with, with our return to practice and training. Protocol. So we'll continue to monitor that. We're very open to the dialogue and obviously great relationships with uh, with all those you mentioned. Thank you very much. <laughs> Minister, your next question comes from Jamie at CBC. Jamie, you've been unmuted. You can go ahead with your question. Hey, Jamie. I think you're still on mute, Jamie. Except on your end. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Congratulations on uh, on today's announcement, and uh, thanks for taking um, some questions um, from us. Just want to kind of shift from Justin's question about um, professional sports to uh, OHL. No, I, I, want to ask you, I want to ask you about um, you know kind of the other athletes in this province, the hundreds of thousands of of children in this province and their families who are kind of looking towards. Uh, the sports seasons, baseball, soccer, basketball, all those great outdoor activities. And like a lot of questions that I'm getting from parents and I'll just kind of act as a conduit to you is that, you know, they are looking at the patios opening, restaurants opening, box stores, malls. And, and as you know, in many parts of this province, including in the GTA, uh, there's been no youth sport activity at all since the end of, uh, of, of December. Can you kind of explain, uh, you know, what the rationale of, of the government is on this file? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So just uh, in terms of the framework for a return uh, to uh, practice or return to play, particularly for Toronto, that work is ongoing. And many of our provincial sport organizations have provided us uh, with their with their protocols. And you can find those on the Ontario.ca website. That said, we recognize that getting kids back into sport and activity is going to be absolutely critical. So two things. One is work on the framework is ongoing. Um, and that is being led by my ministry, and I hope to have more to say in the next couple of weeks about that, and we'll start to see some gradual return to play. And again, it is different where you live. Um, if you were in the green zone, there are far uh, less restrictions than if you're in gray. Um, and I live in Ottawa, so we were in orange, and then my daughter's hockey team had to move to red, so they weren't allowed to scrimmage anymore. So 
that's a, that's a, a big issue for us to make sure that we're looking at those types of things. Uh, and then I see the final point there is we uh, entered into a pilot project um, arrangement a couple of weeks ago with a group called Sport for Ontario. And we're working with them on what a safe return to play looks like post pandemic um, and, and what we can adopt in terms of best practices for uh, you know, getting, getting restoring confidence and putting kids into sport again, post COVID-19, looking at mental health, looking at accessibility for the LGBTQ plus community, our BIPOC community and those with special abilities. So this is a file that we're actively engaged on and actively working on. But again, in terms of when they're allowed to actually get back on the field and return to play like they did in 2019, those decisions were governed by um, the Chief Medical Officer of Health uh, and, uh, and, uh, and even advice to the cabinet to make those decisions. So a little bit lengthy, but uh, happy to take supplemental on that one. Yeah, and I think when you look at a lot of these leagues, especially at the house league level, where a bulk of children in this province, you know, play, you know, you look back to hockey last year, um, many leagues didn't run. You look to baseball this year, many leagues didn't run. And I think a lot of people point to that 50 person bubble um, that exists. And for a lot of leagues, it's not viable for them to operate under 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 those rules. What's the, the rationale um, for that? I mean, a lot of parents I'm talking to are just really, confused by what's driving something that was safe there was tracing uh etc like, like again like i said like they're looking at these patios at these big box stores and they're really kind of confused as to as to why these rules are in place well i think um from from my experience and speaking with the medical officer of health and the public health officer in Western, ottawa um are a number of things one is uh you know you, you it's it's the cohorting um, so there's simply, we're in the middle of a pandemic um, and COVID-19 can spread very quickly. And we know particularly in, in the colder weather, it spreads more fast. And so that's a concern. Uh, the, se the second concern is um, we, when we look at the NHL um, hub city model, uh, they are in controlled environments. Uh, we can't guarantee that in some of these facilities. Um, number three, a lot of these activities require uh, some level of contact um, and it's hard to uh, manage that. And the final thing, and this is what keeps me up at night, and it's something that Dr. David Williams said to me directly um, in some of our conversations, if a young athlete um, that, that has an ability to um, go further, maybe it's the high school basketball team or maybe it's college football or it, it's, it's, it's going into the OHL and they get, they get this deadly virus, um, and perhaps they don't die from it, but it is possible that they will have a severe respiratory challenges later on in life that will prevent them. And so, you know, the decisions that have been made have been made on the advice uh, of the Chief Medical Officer of Health with the intention to stop the spread of COVID-19 uh, and protect the Ontario population. This hasn't been an easy year for my sectors, uh, sport included. Um, and as myself and the Premier noted at the top of this, um, we are in a situation where the sectors that I represent are going to take the longest to recover, which is why we got so much significant support uh, yesterday, both for the social recovery of the province, but also for the, uh, the economic recovery too. So thanks for that question. Thank you, Minister. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for questions. Right? Well, there's one more person has their hand up. So let's, okay. I'll just run. Not a problem. So Minister, uh, your next question will come from Greg at Canadian Press. Greg, we have unmuted you. We'll just have to accept on your end. There you Hi, are. Yes. Hi there. Thanks for the time. I uh, wanted to ask you about the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, their front office seems to be cutting a more optimistic tone regarding the potential for that team to return to Toronto for games this season. Are there any developments on that file when it comes to your end? And are you sharing in that optimism? Well, you know what, Greg, uh, you'll recall early on in the pandemic, we, uh, we, we felt that the, um, the uh, return to play model for the Blue Jays was acceptable and our Chief Medical Officer of Health as well as I believe uh, the, the Medical Officer of Health in Toronto um, Greenland to return to play. Uh, it was the federal government that, for, um, that, that said they, they wouldn't be able to uh, cross the border and it was an, uh, you know, an issue with the United States. So I think the federal minister would, would have to weigh in on whether that was going to happen or not. Um, but certainly the proposals that we had seen early on in the pandemic um, suggested that there would be a, 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 an ability for, for them to safely return to play. Uh, again, when you're looking at these professional uh, sport organizations, they're major economic contributors uh, to our, our cities. Um, in addition, they, they, you know, their investments are their athletes. So there is a, a provision there to keep them safe and, 
um, and, and a real um, discipline there that uh, that is, is somewhat different than, than elsewhere. I didn't know if you had a follow-up. Follow-up? Are you optimistic? Well, you know what? Every day we get more people vaccinated in this province, uh, and every day we start to see people taking uh, the precautions that are re required um, gives me optimism for sure. And yesterday's budget was really about hope in the horizon. And so, uh, you know, we, we've got to continue to do our jobs. We've got to get those numbers down. Um, but, but you know, I'm optimistic that uh, in the next couple of months we're gonna we're gonna really see uh, a much brighter environment. Thank, thank you. you. Minister, any closing remarks? I do. I would just like to say to His Eminence, thank you for taking the time uh, today to, to be with us. Thank you for your kind words to the Premier um, and our government. And, and thank you for always uh, you know, being open to us uh, and in particular to my colleagues. I'd really like to say thanks to Effie and Eris and Christina. They're strong advocates for their community. Um, they're, they're strong advocates in reminding us that Ontario is a very diverse, vibrant place, and that post-COVID-19, we're going to be able to celebrate that diversity again. As I said, uh, I believe that Ontario is the world in one province, and um, it's displayed in this uh, event today. But I think, too, uh, when we honour um, our shared heritage and when we honour uh, our diverse heritage, uh, we do great things for one another, and in particular, I think it's going to be very important as we aid the recovery of our tourism industry. Uh, I can imagine people from around the world will want to see this, this amazing museum uh, when it's completed. So, so thank you all very much and please stay safe.